If there are any people on the entire face of all of planet Earth that the left hates or fears as much as they do Donald Trump, then Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has got to be at the absolute top of that list, man. And really, it's clear to even the casual observer why that is. Now, obviously, the left, they hate conservatives, man. They're programmed, they're trained, they are taught to hate conservatives. They don't even remember why, but they hate them. But if you're a member of a protected class that they believe should be a monolith and should be beholden to them, pledge allegiance only to the Democrat Party, well, then there is absolutely no bounds for their hate. If you're a woman, either a real one or a pretend one, especially probably if you're a pretend one, if you're gay or if you're black, being a conservative is a sin like no other sin on the planet, right? But anyway... The left, I imagine, is going to completely lose their hive mind when they hear Clarence Thomas just destroy the immunity argument put forth by a government that is in the process of attempting to meddle in a presidential election. From all of the important tasks that the Constitution reposes in him. Uh, over, over in not so distant past, uh, the presidents or certain presidents have engaged in uh, various uh, activity, coups or uh, operations like Operation Mongoose when I was uh, a teenager, uh, and yet there were no prosecutions. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, if, you, if what you're saying is right, it, it would seem that that would have been ripe for uh, criminal prosecution of someone. So, Justice Thomas, I think this is a central question. The reason why uh, there have not been prior criminal prosecutions is that there were not crimes. And I want to explain why there are layers of safeguards that assure that former presidents do not have to lightly assume criminal liability for any of their official acts. At the outset, there is a statutory construction principle that is applicable here. It arises when there is a serious constitutional question about applying a criminal statute to the President's Act. It is not, and I'm sure that we will discuss this, that no statute can apply to the President in his official capacity absent a designation of the President in it. But there is a principle that if there is a serious constitutional question, courts will strive to construe the statute so that it does not apply to the President. In addition to that, the president, I think has been mentioned earlier, has access to advice from the attorney general, and it would be a due process problem to prosecute a president who received advice from the attorney general that his actions were lawful, absent the kind of collusion or conspiracy that itself represented a criminal violation, which I don't really see as being a realistic well, option. And then if I could say one more thing, because you raised the question about... You know, Thomas's question, I think, is a pretty clear, pretty simple, pretty straightforward question, man. If the president does not have absolute immunity, like every other federal official, then why were there not charges for things like Operation Mongoose, which was a president officially authorizing the CIA to carry out literal false flag terrorist attacks in a foreign country? And if you want a more recent example, Obama's droning of American citizens absent of anything even resembling due process is just an obvious example. And, and the point is not to go after these former presidents, right? The point is, if Donald Trump can be charged with essentially speaking to a freaking crowd, then how have we not charged things that can actually be described as crimes? It doesn't make any sense. And no one can look at this stuff objectively and think that it does make sense. And, and here's what I think is going to happen there will be some sort of immunity decided for President Trump. Actually, decided is not a good way to put it. Reaffirmed. There will be some sort of immunity reaffirmed because he has, like all federal officials, absolute immunity. And here's what I think the two possibilities are. Neither one, I think, is going to be liked by Jack Smith. Either this case is going to get remanded back to Judge uh, Tanya Chutkin's court with an order to hold evidentiary hearings on whether or not these were official acts or which ones were official acts or whatever. And if that happens, then it's likely it would end up back at the Supreme Court for a final ruling and a final just review, I guess. That's a possibility. Another possibility is that the Supreme Court goes line by line through this indictment and decides which ones are official acts 
and just ends it right there. You know, I, I don't know which way it's going to go. One thing for sure, no matter how it happens, no matter what language gets used, no matter how constitutionally sound and unquestionable the decision is, the left will not accept it. They will absolutely lose their minds. And it's just going to start the same old rinse and repeat, you know, manufactured outrage and calls for packing the court, impeaching Justice Thomas, term limits, blah, 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 whatever. That's what's going to happen. The only question I think that's out there still is how quick it all happens. And we sh we should we'll see about that. But that's just my take, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth, man. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.